Beneath Auckland's busy streets, a massive tunnel boring machine weighing 910 tonnes and longer than a rugby field at 130 metres, dug twin rail tunnels up to 42 metres deep. This underground marvel is the City Rail Link, a 3.45-kilometre engineering feat. It will transform Auckland's rail network, allowing trains to carry up to 54,000 people an hour, turning a dead-end train station into a two-way hub. It is the largest transport project in New Zealand's history, costing $5.5 billion. How did engineers pull off this incredible underground transformation? And what secrets lie beneath the surface? Auckland, New Zealand's largest city, has always faced a big challenge – moving its growing population. For nearly a hundred years, people dreamed of a better rail system. Back in 1923, there was a plan for an underground line called the Morningside Deviation to connect the city centre. It would have gone under the downtown area, but this idea, costing around £400,000 back then, was rejected in 1930. Decades later, in the 1940s and 50s, more plans came up, including ideas for electrifying the rail lines and building inner-city loops. Reports even suggested limiting new roads until rail improved. Instead, Auckland focused on building motorways, even tearing up tram tracks in the 1950s, believing buses could use the new roads and make rail unnecessary. The city's main downtown train station, Waitemata Station, also known as Britomart, was built as a dead-end station. This meant trains had to go in and then reverse out, creating a bottleneck and limiting how many trains could run at peak times. This old design choked the system, slowing down travel and preventing the rail network from growing as the city expanded. As Auckland's kept growing, with rail use jumping by around 22% in just one year, around 2015, it became clear that the city needed a real solution. The city rail link was finally approved to fix this long-standing problem and unlock Auckland's future. The city rail link is made of two parallel tunnels, each 3.45 kilometers long. These tunnels dive deep, up to 42 meters below the city center, passing under major roads like Albert Street, Karangahapi Road, and even the central motorway junction. Building these tunnels required two main methods. For shallower parts, especially along Albert Street, where many underground pipes and cables already existed, engineers used a cut and cover method. This means they dug a big trench from the surface, built the tunnel within it, and then carefully covered it back up, putting the surface back to normal. This bottom-up approach was chosen because the ground was too shallow for a large tunneling machine, and there were many existing utilities in the way. For the deeper sections, where digging from the surface would cause too much disruption, they used a special machine called a Tunnel Boring Machine, or TBM. This giant machine digs deep underground, causing very little disturbance on the surface. This choice of method was a smart way to adapt to the different ground conditions and busy city environment, making sure the project could move forward with minimal impact on daily life. The star of the show for the deep tunnels was a huge machine named Dame Winner Cooper. She was custom built by a German company called Herentknecht, costing about $13.5 million. This TBM is truly massive. Its spinning cutter head is 7.15 meters across, which is taller than an adult giraffe. The entire machine stretches 130 meters long, which is longer than a rugby field, and it weighs a staggering 910 tons, about the same as nine blue whales combined. Dame Winner Cooper worked non-stop 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A crew of 12 people worked underground inside the machine, with another 12 supporting them above ground. Her job was threefold. First, she dug the tunnels by spinning her cutter head. Second, she removed all the dirt and rocks, sending up to 2,600 tons of spoil each day by conveyor belt to the surface, which was then taken to disused quarries. And third, she installed the strong precast concrete panels that lie in the tunnel walls, making them safe and sturdy. One amazing thing about this TBM is that people above ground barely felt anything. This is because it's an earth pressure balanced TBM. This clever design means it controls and balances the pressure of the earth it digs through. 
By doing this, it keeps the ground stable and prevents any sinking or shaking on the surface. This precision engineering was crucial for tunneling under a busy city with existing buildings and infrastructure, ensuring safety and minimizing disruption. Dame Winner Cooper began her first 1.6 km journey from Mangawahu Station in April 2021, taking nine months to reach Tawaihorotui Station in Midtown Auckland. After that, she was taken apart, moved back to Mangawahu, and reassembled to dig the second parallel tunnel, finishing in September 2022. Once both tunnels were done, the TBM was carefully dismantled and shipped back to Germany. Building the CRL wasn't just about the giant TBM. Many other specialized machines and clever methods were used to tackle specific challenges. For example, a smaller 2-meter-wide machine named Valerie was a micro-TBM used for pipe jacking. She dug and installed a new stormwater pipe under Albert Street, traveling 290 meters in one direction and another 200 meters in the opposite direction, totaling 490 meters. Then there were powerful piling rigs like Goma, a nine-story high machine that dug 372 deep piles up to 20 meters deep. Another rig, Sandrine, a 90-ton machine, helped build diaphragm walls or D-walls. These diaphragm walls are like strong, continuous concrete barriers dug deep into the ground. They're built by excavating a narrow trench supported by a special clay mixture called bentonite slurry which prevents the trench from collapsing before concrete is poured. These D-walls form the sturdy sides of the tunnels and stations, keeping water out and providing essential structural support. Before any major digging could start, engineers faced a huge, often unseen challenge. Moving existing underground pipes, cables and wires. This is called utility diversion. They had to dig many small holes, sometimes called potholes, to find these hidden utilities because old maps were often inaccurate. This meticulous process was like a giant treasure hunt, crucial for clearing the path for the new railway and ensuring that essential services like stormwater, electricity and telecommunications were not disrupted. The City Rail Link will bring three new or redeveloped stations to Auckland. Waitamata Station, formerly Britomart, is being transformed from its dead-end design into a two-way through station. Then there are two brand new underground stations, Tawaihoratui Station in Midtown and Karanga Ahape Station uptown. Finally, Mongawahu Station, an existing station near Mount Eden, is being redeveloped to connect with the new tunnels. Each station has its own unique depth. Tawaihoratui Station will be the shallowest new station sitting 11 meters underground. Karenga Ahape Station will be the deepest, plunging down 33 meters. The tunnels themselves go even deeper, up to 42 meters below the surface. Beyond their engineering, these stations are also a powerful expression of New Zealand's cultural identity. The CRL is the country's largest civic public art project with artwork and design elements woven into the architecture. These designs tell stories of the land and Maori heritage, reflecting the Te Ao Maori worldview that people and the land are one. For example, some station panels depict the Watamata sandstone, an artwork at Te Waihoratui Station's Wellesley Street entrance recreates the Waihoratui stream, connecting the modern structure to ancient narratives. Once the tunnels and stations are built, the real brains of the operation kick in, the tracks and signaling systems. The CRL has two parallel tracks and trains will run on some of New Zealand's steepest rail grades, meaning they go up and down quite a bit. To handle this and ensure safety, the CRL uses an advanced system called European Train Control System, or ETCS. Think of ETCS as smart traffic lights for trains, but all inside the driver's cab. It constantly checks train speeds, braking distances, and safe stopping spots. This system is super important for the steep parts of the CRL, making sure trains do not go too fast. It also allows trains to run closer together safely, which means more frequent services, trains every four to five minutes during peak times. This advanced signaling system is fundamental to achieving the project's goal of increased capacity 
and can even support full automation in the future. Behind the scenes, digital tools like Building Information Modeling, or BIM, and Geographic Information System, or GIS, were vital. These are like super smart 3D models that helped engineers design the tunnels, track issues, and even simulate how people would move through the stations. BIM was used for computational tunnel design, comprehensive work breakdown, and automated quality assurance reports. These digital smarts helped reduce project delays and even allowed teams to work remotely during challenging times like the COVID-19 pandemic. Building a project of this scale comes with a significant cost. The total cost to build the City Rail Link is $5.5 billion. Once it opens in 2026, Auckland ratepayers will contribute an estimated $220 million each year to run and maintain it. This money covers interest on the loans used to build the project, wear and tear on the infrastructure, and the daily costs of running the stations and extra train services. This huge investment, jointly funded by the New Zealand Government and Auckland Council, brings massive benefits that extend far beyond just transport. The CRL will double the number of people who can reach the city centre within 30 minutes, significantly improving access to New Zealand's largest employment hub. Travel times will shrink dramatically. For example, the trip from Mongawahu Station to the Midtown to Waihoratui Station will take just six minutes and to downtown Waitemata station, only nine minutes. This faster, more frequent rail service, capable of moving up to 54,000 passengers per hour, will ease road congestion, create new commercial and residential development opportunities around the stations, and support Auckland's continued economic and population growth for decades to come. This investment is set to transform Auckland's urban landscape and livability. The City Rail Link is now in its final stages, with construction over 80% complete. Track laying in the tunnels was finished in early 2024, and temporary station buildings are being removed to make way for new public spaces. The project is now in a critical testing phase, which is the most complicated part of building a new railway. This includes testing the complex tunnel ventilation systems, security, lighting and communication systems. Auckland One Rail's test train officers are already training to operate trains through the tunnels, and the first test train successfully ran the full length of the tunnels in February 2025. This rigorous testing and integration of all systems is essential to ensure a safe and reliable service from day one. The project is set to be handed over to Auckland Transport and Kiwi Rail in November 2025. After that, they'll carry out final work, including trial runs to get everything ready for passengers. The City Rail Link is expected to open its doors to the public in 2026. This incredible engineering achievement will forever change how Aucklanders travel, connecting communities, speeding up journeys, and laying the groundwork for a more vibrant, connected city. If you found this deep dive into Auckland's City Rail Link fascinating, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Megabills for more amazing engineering stories, Leave a comment below with your thoughts and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video.